Hello and welcome to episode 62 of Apex Instant Tips. As we mentioned last week, Hayden has joined Oracle's pandemic response team, so he is no longer a host of our show, um, which means that we've probably lost 50% of our audience, leaving just my mom uh, for today's episode. Um, hey, Anton, sorry, uh, your mom's not there today. She uh, So, yes, so as I feared, even my mom has decided to drop off. But this week's special guest, as may have been um, uh, guest, um, is none other than Hayden Hudson. Uh, it's an honor to be here, Anton. Uh, Long time listener, uh, first time guest. Oh, you know, um, I'm glad to have you. And uh, we've, um, you're, so you're familiar with the show. I have seen a few episodes, that's correct. Uh, oh, I, I've never actually watched one by myself, but. Um, <laughs> but They're but, not great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you could make it, and, and hopefully we'll have an opportunity uh, to uh, to have you back again. But um, today's episode, um, uh, as you may know, we, we allow just five minutes for a tip. Um, I will stick around after the tip to answer any questions. As a guest, you're not obligated to do so, but if you'd like to, we'd be happy to have you. Well, I uh, would like to give an off-topic tip, as it were. Oh, well, fantastic. It sounds like you've even done some work for the show. Uh, well, with no further ado, let me introduce the topic of today's uh, tip is Apex Session .attach. Have, have you ever used Apex Session .attach? Uh, uh, never. Um, I only use Apex Session .create. And I'm guessing you know that it, probably just by the name of the, the distinction between create and attach? Right. Yeah. So uh, if you have an existing session, Apex Session .attach would allow you to interact with that session from outside of Apex. That, that, that's right. Um, you, can, you can actually, you can join an existing session. That's exactly right. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna show some interesting things using Apex session .attach. Um, Let me go ahead and kick off our timer. Um, here we go. So we have five minutes to show some interesting things. I have a session on the right. Um, I'm going to attach that session. I just grab the, the session ID. I attach, um, and now, hey, give me a, some one of these, pick one for me. Uh, let's do minimal. Minimal, okay, I'm gonna set minimal. If I come back here, I will now see that the value is minimal. Um, That's awesome, and, and so this would be very handy for say debugging a remote session. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other great thing though is, and it's a little bit of a parlor trick, but I can actually push session state back, so I can set that. I'm going to set that to Triple H over here. That's not even part of the select list, but I have display extra values. So if I refresh my page, I've got Triple H. Fantastic. And so now that you're attached from SQL Developer, does the uh, 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 can you set the value from Apex and have it uh, show up in SQL Developer as you did in the beginning? Oh well, and that's really interesting. If I try to switch this to normal now, and I come back and I check it, it's not going to do it. It you get the session state at the moment that you attached. The entire Apex session state at the moment you attach is there until you attach again. I would have to reattach if I want to get the new session state. Of course, every page view is a new attach as far as Apex is concerned. So if I change the, the session state here to Anton, for example, and I commit it in, and then I refresh this, it will show up here because it has attached again. But right. as, as you pointed out, it doesn't change it back. You have to reattach. But that's not true for collections. With collections, you get the session state all the time as it, as it exists. And that leads to an, a, a window into being able to do some really interesting things. Uh, yes. Uh, so between these two mechanisms, Apex Collections and Apex Session.attach, perhaps you could replicate the functionality behind uh, the uh, tip that we gave um, in episode 57 when we reviewed uh, the United Code's uh, progress bar with feedback. In uh, fact, plugin. I'm going to show something very similar to that. The ability to run something in the background, right? You, you have a long running job, that you, a long running thing that you don't want the user to have to sit and wait for. Um, so what we have here is the ability to analyze DNA. Now, if I, as you might get, guess, analyzing a DNA sequence can take a long time. So I've got this random DNA sequence. If I were to simply hit analyze and not run it in the background, my user would have to wait a long time. What I did was I created, if we look right here, all it does is it says, analyze the DNA in the background. That's what this process does. What it does is it creates a job. So I use um, analyze D 
deep, uh, DNA in the background, it first writes one row to a collection. It just writes that it's going to analyze the DNA. And then it, run, it creates a job to run that procedure. That's running in the background. So it takes just an instant to create that job. I do pass in, the, the, of course, the DNA sequence. I pass in the app ID, page ID, and the session, and that row ID. So all the job has to do is this Apex session dot attach. Once it's attached, it has full access to session state, but it also has the ability to write to my collection back into my, there. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's run it. We'll go ahead and analyze our data. You can see up at the top right, it shows that it's running. As I navigate throughout the application, it continues to show it's running. But when so it's this, done- this solves the very tricky process of uh, handing off jobs between client and server. Exactly right. And now it shows that it's complete and I can see that job completed. Um, if I put in, if I return here and I go back and I put in some, um, some bad DNA string and I start analyzing it and see if that job is running as well, I can actually have, I can have several of them running. I don't even have to just have one. I could have more than one job running at a time. And you're, and you're showing off how um, by doing this, you're able to have uh, free use of the Apex application while the database is doing some heavy lifting. That's exactly it. So there it is. We've got the ability to do all of these things um, in the background. Brilliant. And uh, so, I mean, th this must be very complicated. <laughs> it truly, it truly is not. It's just this little tiny bit of code. That's it. Well, if it's as simple as you say, Anton, we should share this code base with our viewers to approve it. Ooh, well, it might be more work to share it than to write it. Um, how long would it take to get that available, Hayden? Well, as it happens, we've already done it. And so uh, Mark is uh, sharing the link right now. Uh, feel free to check it out. There is a, a package that contains the few lines of PL SQL that this involves and the export of the Apex application as it currently is. So it looks like with five seconds to go, we've hit our five minute mark um, and even given uh, the link to, to all the code. Um, so nice if, if you've just come in for five minutes, um, I recommend you beat it now, but don't forget to do all of the things that people tell you to do smash those bugs and, and ring those like, bells subscribe. And, like oh like that's it um all yeah. those things um send letters to your to your mom tell them about the show um so as i mentioned um i have time to stick around but i also have a wisdom of the week so Excellent. this this was week's wisdom of the week um is beware of the i'm gonna have to read it. Uh, beware uh, beware the data analysis infinite recursion loop um Sometimes I cheat. Really, we could we could just call this the XKCD of the week. Um, <laughs> but today's XKCD is really quite funny. Um, hey, look, we have a bunch of data. I'm going to analyze it. No, you fool. That will only create more data. <laughs> right. So we've got ourselves in an infinite recursion loop. Uh, so there we go. Uh, this week's uh, XKCD of the week. Um, Always a classic. So um, I haven't really checked, but we... Do we have any comments that are, are worthy? Um, <laughs> Michelle. Um, so, um, uh, uh, so it looks like we've got a few people, um, a few people that like the tip anyway. So that's great. Um, speaking of liking the tip, I'm going to mention one other thing. Uh, I gave a tip about um, cloning new sessions. And I said, um, and I even created a, a plugin uh, for that. I don't remember. But there was a caveat to the plugin. It didn't work with friendly URLs. Um, of course, last night, about 10 PM, I noticed uh, a GitHub comment asking uh, about that very thing. So I've got it on my plate to rework the plugin for Apex cloning um, to, uh, to allow for friendly URLs. Um, the, uh, the burdens of uh, contributing to uh, an open source project. Yes, for sure. Um, but this one, we've, I think we've given everything somebody needs. Um, there's, no, uh, there's no more uh, required. Well, actually, Hayden, there's one thing that, that you pointed out uh, earlier that the United Codes plugin actually will, um, will update that. You don't have to navigate throughout the application for the, the job status to update. Yeah. I mean, Along with some other things, they also have like a slicker UX. So <laughs> yes. there's still so many reasons to consider uh, um, the uh, United Codes plugin. 
Oh yeah, there's many, many things. Uh, I love XLJS for Apex reporting. I'll have to take a look at that. I haven't used it. That's, uh, have you used that? No. XLJS, no. I'm definitely gonna have to take a, take a look at that. Uh, look that up. Um, well, Hayden, um, I understand we have an off topic tip. What do, we, what do you have for us? We do. Um, as, uh, if we could uh, share my screen, I will uh, walk us through it quickly. So uh, it's another Chrome extension. It's also a Firefox. It's called Bug Magnet. And it's just a, a facility for uh, exploring edge cases for testing purposes. So um, let's say I have this application. You may remember it from a previous tip. I, mm -hmm. as, as part of testing, you want to find out, you want to come up with scenarios that will exploit um, vulnerabilities, break things. And so uh, it, uh, once you've installed the extension, it is made accessible through uh, uh, right-clicking uh, on your mouse. Um, and uh, here under Bug Magnet, the new Chrome extension, we see a bunch of options. Do any of them jump out of, uh, to you as interesting, Anton? Yeah, well, I think um, format exploits sounds interesting. I wonder what that is. Ah, exactly, yeah. beautiful. So uh, there are a bunch of um, format exploits uh, we could try uh, SQL injection. So um, th th this will uh, allow you to test the, the mo most standard way to exploit SQL injection. Uh, little um, Bobby tables, yes. We're little Bobby uh, tables. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or you might um, be interested in uh, just summoning the standard uh, lorem ipsum text uh, to explore longer text formats, or perhaps you're interested in um, non-standard characters. Maybe you want um, uh, some Arabic and, and oh, see uh, really what will happen. What, yeah. what happens if you throw, if you apply that change? Really interesting. Oh, look at that. Apex is good, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not easy to, uh, most of these exploits won't work, um, uh, but still worth, um, worth having at your disposal. Well, absolutely. And, and you know, just from a, a even a demoing perspective, I'm always thinking like, oh, what name am I going to put in here? What text am I going to put in here? I love it just from a, you know, saving me the burden of having to come up with what it is I'm going to pop into a, a field. So right. um, I love this. It's called yeah. Bug Magnet. I'm definitely going Bug to install magnet. it. I've got, I'm going to have this, this whole slew of uh, Hayden uh, recommended um, um, Chrome plugins. So, so. Yeah, uh, I will have more. Ah, I love it. I love it. Well, um, I loved uh, having you as a guest, Hayden. Perhaps um, we can try and make this happen again sometime. Uh, but we'll see. Until then, uh, everybody, even yourself included, have a great weekend. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye.